Now, you will recall from yesterday that when we looked at probability trees, what we map out is the chance of different things happening. So for example, if we were rolling a die, rolling a die, right? We know that we can describe all the different outcomes that are there. I could, for instance, because there are six possibilities, six items in the sample space for rolling an eye, I could have six branches going out. But it depends very much on what the question, bless you, on what the question is asking you based on whether you actually draw that many branches or not. So for example, I might decide to actually frame this a little bit differently. I might say, what's the probability of rolling a composite number? Now, you haven't heard the word composite number for a long time. Back in year seven was the last time you met this idea. Um, but here, if you've got composite numbers, then you've got numbers that aren't composite. Now, let me just remind you, um, so that it helps you remember. A composite number is one that you can write as um, the product of Something times something else, and neither of those things is one. Something times something else, and neither of those things is one. Okay? So for example, two is not a composite number. Because when you write that as something times something, what would you write it as? One times two. There's no other way to write it. You can't avoid writing one. right? Um, on the other hand, six is a composite number, because you can write it as two times three. And you've avoided one. That's nice. Okay? So how many composite numbers are there on a die? Have a think about it. I've already told you one of them. There are two composite numbers. They are four and six. Okay. That makes all the other numbers, <coughs> excuse me, at least on a die, not composite. So one, two, three, and five. That's a really bad three. Okay. So now you can see the probabilities on these branches are not the same. As opposed to if i just drawn out all six, they would all be a sixth. Look, when you have a look at the probability of each one, there are less favorable events here than there are here. So clearly the chances are different. How many favorable events are there here? Two. How many total events are there? Six. So I could easily write that as one over three, okay? Uh, that would make this over here, you could count them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, out of 6, which of course is 2 thirds. Or you even could have gotten to that number, 2 thirds, without even counting. What's another way that we could have done it? Think back to yesterday and I introduced this idea, or reintroduced this idea of a complement. Do you remember the complement? Yeah, I could subtract this from 1, because I know all of these items, they're going to have to all add up to... One, because that's every possible event, okay? So, we drew something like this, but then what I didn't get to yesterday, at least in terms of my drawing, is that sometimes the probability tree continues, right? So, I might keep going like this. So, I might roll a second die, or maybe I'll draw a card out of a deck. Or maybe I will bless you. Maybe I will, maybe I'll bless you. Maybe I'll flip a coin, right? Uh, maybe I will select a student at random. So these events don't have to do with each other. They don't have to be connected, um, but they often are. It's often like I flipped two coins or I rolled two dice or something like that. So again, if I do this, right, I could say composite or not composite, composite or not composite, right? So I've got extra possibilities that are kind of emerging as I do more and more events. We call this a multi-stage event. It's got two stages to it. And just like before, there's probabilities for each of these. I don't need to write two fractions for each one. I'm just going to go straight to the simplified one. So we're going to go a third, two thirds, a third, two thirds. Okay. You notice in this case, from one branch to the next, these probabilities are identical. You notice that? Why would they be identical? Why did they change? Like for example, is, isn't it, doesn't it feel natural to you that after rolling a composite number, it's less likely to roll it again? No, it's not, because we call these events independent. 
right? They don't have, like this die doesn't care about this die. They're completely disconnected. It is actually true that it's less likely to roll two composite numbers, but for a different reason that I'm gonna show you in a second. Over on the right hand side, I want you to write, see how I've got a first heading, a second heading, write a third heading for me, which is sample space. Okay. You can see here, each of these branches, if I follow them along, they give me a different kind of event, right? So the first one, the one right at the top here, is you got a composite number on this die and a composite number on this die. So I guess I could call that composite, composite, right? I then have the second event, which is composite, not composite. And I can just keep on going down and I can write all of them. Not composite, composite, not composite, not composite. Okay, so there's the sample space. And you can see how the tree diagram helps you create the sample space and make sure you don't miss anything. So now how do I work out the probabilities here? How do I work out the probability of this one, and this one, and this one, and this one? Any suggestions? For example, what's the probability? How do I work out the probability that I'll get two composite numbers in a row? Any suggestions? All the numbers are there, you just gotta choose how to combine them. Anyone wanna stick their hand up and be brave? Hmm. So this is one of the tricky things about probability, that we have a lot of instincts when it comes to this, um, and a lot of intuition, but the key with doing, maths, uh, doing probability mathematically is that you do not need to rely on instincts, even though instincts will become important in a second. Ash, what's your suggestion? Okay, so um, I've had a suggestion of a quarter, I've had a suggestion of that's gonna be a ninth. Are there any other suggestions? Any other ways that I could combine this? Could I suggest? It seems like if I'm interested in this top one, two composite numbers, then I've got a composite fraction here, a composite fraction here. I could add them, couldn't I? Like that's another way of combining those fractions. So I've tried multiplying, I can try adding, I can try I don't really know how you got a quarter, but I could try that, okay? Um, actually, I, I can think of a way that you could get a quarter out of this, and that's not that uncommon an answer. Where might a quarter come from this? One, two, three, four. So one out of four, okay? So which one is it? 